Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Amanda needs a little introduction, Renee Rizepe of Nova, recently just named the world's best restaurant, 2021. Um, I'm going to ask Renee a couple of questions to kick off and then please wave and let us know who you are, um, your publication and country, and then uh, uh, fire away with some questions. Uh, Renee, just to kick off, obviously this is the the fifth time that NOMA has been named, but the first time in its new iteration um, because the restaurant, uh, the, the restaurant changed, of course, um, changed location, uh, changed its uh, structure, and so this new version of NOMA has become number one for the first time. Uh, how does yeah, that last time. <laughs> <laughs> how does, how does, how does, how does it it's like ex explaining how does it feel to have gone through the last two years, you know, because it's a, it's a, and, you know, I often when we talk about how does it feel to actually feel good, it, you feel almost guilty to be so happy right now, <laughs> um, but it feels honestly amazing. I, I feel like this is the best I've felt in this 50 best. It really is. Um, and you know, it's, it's not, as I, again, it's not that I would ever think that we are the best restaurant in the world. It's just, after all this period, to be here and everybody is out again and you can see people at first. I was really anxious to see so many people and, and then, uh, you know, to have gone through a period in which it has been so many incredible ups and downs and then to be celebrated, to have that, that, that was really, it's really something, it's really something. <laughs> and uh, someone else, but I'll ask as well, what's the secret to your success? Oh, the secret. Um, we, I mean, you, you know, we've been open 18 years and I don't want to sound like a broken old record when you say it's all about the team, it's all about the team, but the secret is 79 different secrets. And they all have names, and one of them is Anna, and another one is Kenneth, and one is Peter, and one is Annegret, and one is, Ad you know, and the list goes on. If you are able to find that as a group of individuals and actually build something, a group, an energy of sorts, in which everybody contribu contributes, then a special energy happens. And that, I think, is our secret. Thank you. Uh, questions from the floor. Uh, I'm going to... Um, no, okay. I'm going to give you the mic and I'm going to run around with it. Thanks so much. Uh, you all have heard Ken say, the Netherlands, congratulations, Chef. Uh, you just sat on stage and you've been thinking really hard in the last 18 months. What kind of restaurant do you want it to be for the next decade? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your conclusions? Or are you just heavy weight? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, um, I, th I think when uh, at one point, uh, I guess it's uh, when we became number one on the, the second or third time, we had, I told my team, you know, what we need to be is be the best place to work in. Why? Let's be the best in that. And so I guess the pandemic despite its trials and tribulations. It was an incredible moment for us to plan, okay, how are we actually gonna figure this thing out? How can we uh, be the best and have the most incredible creativity, the best energy, but how can we also have everyone have children and support everyone and have them work in a way that uh, gives somewhat of a balance for the future? That is some of the questions we've been asking ourselves very hard, and we put some things into motion for that to come into fruition. I mean, this is not a light switch. You know, it's not like, oh, tomorrow everything's gonna be glow glowing. It's a long grind, and, um, and we are very obvious towards that, but I'm extremely excited about it. Um, I have also learned in the pandemic that what really makes me happy is, uh, um, kind of this feeling of not really knowing what's gonna what you're doing, 
um, be having this creativity in your life. That is, I need that to just stay sane. I also need to have my team around me. And uh, that's it, also something that I've truly learned. Um, and so we need to secure those two things, you know, the longevity of our creativity. So how, how can we have less production and more creativity? Production is like every day we're, we're chopping away 12 months of the year, you know, creativity is this afterthought most places. How can we reverse it? So how? <laughs> you will just have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, we are, uh, we have some, we have some thoughts around this, but it's like building a pyramid, stone by stone. Congratulations again. When on uh, 2010, I think Noma was the first person we before, a new, a new era began for Nordic Scandinavia. Yes, you did. Now it's a new era again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is, and, and uh, I welcome it. I welcome change. 100%, it's time, 100%, uh, I, I, uh, I can't wait to see what happens. I can't wait to see what happens. Have you any ideas? I mean, I have a very, very strong love and affinity for Latin America, particularly Mexico. So, that's what I think, <laughs> you know. And I mean, I love so many things, don't get me wrong, I, I don't want to say anything that Scandinavia has a little more, a few more years still. <laughs> um, yeah, talking about the, the, the Nordic again, does it mean anything to you? What does it mean to you that, that Copenhagen actually now has two, well, just not you, but also Uranium as, as number two? Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. <laughs> I mean, I was sitting, but Rasmus from Uranium was right there. And, but, you know, in order for people to understand Copenhagen, they have to understand that. This is like an anthill. We are an anthill. Everybody walks into each other at one point, uh, and everybody sort of needs the support of one another to actually get through it. So I'm just so happy and thrilled. And hey, if if they're gonna pick up the, <laughs> that would be so cool. Um, and um, there's something special that's been happening in the little city of Copenhagen for a while. It's, uh, it's, and it's still happening. If I can allow myself one This is a local journalist. Well, if I, can, I can talk to you after, yeah, sorry. <laughs> My name is uh, Stefan Platsky, he's Belgium. Can you compare yourself as a cook that you were in 2010 to the cook you are right now in 2020? No, of course not. I mean, many things are the same. Like, the seed of our inspiration is the same. But in 2010, I had one child, so now I have three. I've just gone through a very painful teenage period with the first one. Uh, that changes you. Um, I, 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 I think, of course, you can't be exactly the same. You learn more and you understand different things that makes you make other choices. In 2010, how old was I? 11 years ago, so 33, yeah. Um, and um, it was just, uh, I mean, at, at that period, we were going through this incredible rush of energy and attention, and I didn't know what to do with it. It was like, it was like a shock uh, to even try to comprehend it. Nobody can prepare for it, nobody. And culinary school doesn't for anything other than making Bernays, you know, so uh, it was uh, it was wild. I'm in a completely different place today. Renee, you've spoken a lot about the pandemic tonight. If you go back to March last year, did you have any moments or days where you feared that your career may be over? Or did, was that just a fleeting thought? No, it was not a fleeting thought. It was all the time. 
percent. Um, you know, sometimes when you talk about how it was March of 2020, it feels like talking about how when you used to be able to smoke in airplanes. You know, nobody can even remember that anymore because it's so many things that have happened. But uh, no, I, 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 we had a plan where we would pool all the money that we have into we call it a war chest. And then we would pool all the staff onto different couches, and then we'd use the war chest to feed people. We thought it was going to be that bad in those first three, four weeks, five weeks. And you think, okay, what's, what's after this? I mean, uh, I, I, didn't everybody think that a little bit? Uh, so it was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was bad. I mean, I also want to say we live in the most privileged corner in the world, the Scandinavians. Small countries, everybody agrees on everything, the social structure is set up. Da, 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 you know? I just want to say that. Congratulations, chefs. I'm Thank you. from Sweden, SVD. Um, so, this is not only the award um, that you won, maybe you also won the sought after three stars. Um, what does this uh, award and that mean to you? How does it come back to you financially? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh, I don't know yet, but I know that we will need to do things. Um, in the pandemic, very early on, when we figured out hey, we're actually going to survive this, we're going to be able to, you know, uh, Copenhagen will get through this. And we were able to separate financial trouble and productivity, creativity, and positivity. And so here it's a whole, and here we're better and stronger than ever. I'm really, really, really I'm feeling better than I have in a decade. Um, because we were able to just separate them. So how we're gonna fill this hole, um, <clears throat> that, will, that is a good question. And so I don't know what, what that will, this will mean financially. I mean, we are always full. Yeah. So, uh, but you know, I mean, in, in Denmark, all the, all the records are public. You can go and see the last 18 years of uh, financials uh, of any uh, company. It's clear, you can see that our average profit before the pandemic was three. Uh, so, you know, there wasn't much, there wasn't much to play around with. And then of course in the pandemic, uh, it's a different situation. Do you think that last time it really changed the way bookings ran? And, you know, perhaps um, a few years down the line, there's another aspect to it. Maybe, yeah. yeah. You know, you would know, I, I can't even begin to think how we're gonna plan for 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 this. I don't know. I have no clue. Uh, if I'm like, uh, we, we didn't come here thinking we were gonna win. I just want to really, you know, we didn't. Food and wine said, but you know, Rene, you got uh, three stars and now uh, number one, and you said, uh, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, it's been a wild ride, and and goodbye. Uh, how how will you motivate yourself uh, in a way over the over the next uh, year? Of course, uh, awards are, are extremely important. Uh, you're constantly creating uh, new projects. Uh, uh, you of course have a platform, but uh, the competitive aspect in a way is uh, is now gone. Yeah, definitely there is a competitive aspect to it, but this has never been our end goals, and it. Very early on, when this, all this started, I honestly learned with myself that everything is just a loan. I see this award as a bank loan. <laughs> the bank will come and they collect. Don't get attached to things uh, because it's not yours to keep. And um, I genuinely feel that it's it's not our end goal. We're very happy to get these because it allows us to have opportunities. Um, but uh, the plan we dreamed up doesn't involve any of these awards. Sorry to say, you know, uh, it's a different thing that I want to uh, achieve. And I, I can only talk about it if we actually get there. 
Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's important to add that from a Thrifty Best perspective, when we get asked, of course, how do you get onto this? What's the best way to get onto this, this list? And our answer chimes with Renes, which is do not try to get onto this list. Try to do your best and please your customers and you know, create the, the best business you can. And if you get onto this as a byproduct, that's a, hopefully a positive affirmation and celebration. But if you're aiming directly for the list, that's not the way we believe that restaurants should um, should be. Um, that's not what should drive them. And even though, of course, it's very important to us, these these awards, it's, it's a, again a byproduct of, of great restaurants rather than restaurants. years I would hate myself. It would really be a terrible time. Yeah, because I, I, I felt like I should be this leader to, for people. But I, I, I was just such a disappointment. Uh, because, uh, you know, I had gone through uh, all these kitchens around the world and the head chef was screaming. I was like, can't they see? It's not working. When I'm going to be a head chef, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> and then I became a head chef. Uh, and, uh, and then you, you realize, oh shit, this is a different thing to be managing like this and I was a uh, I was very disappointed in myself um, and uh, I work on this every day and I feel like we, we have a good place but it's not as simple you know you have we have more than 20 nationalities and uh, you would be surprised how crazy it can be when two different nationalities two diff different cultures they clash in the fish room about the cod head, you know? It's really like that. It's not, it's not as simple as you think. Uh, let me call you in a little bit. Okay, 
Thank you so much for joining us and congratulations again. You're running